Hello everyone. In the previous two sessions, we learned about if and switch activities. In this session, we are going to learn about for each activities. If we observe both if and switch activities are not useful for repetitive process. For each while and do while activities are used for repetitive process. If you have not watched our previous two videos about if and switch activities, please watch previous videos before proceeding this video. For each activity enables you to step by step through arrays, lists, data tables or other types of collections so that you can iterate through the data and process each piece of information individually. In this session, we are going to use both if and switch activities along with for each activity. Let me start with one of the use case we are going to see in real time scenario. Let's assume we are having students. Okay, if you see on my you know screen that we are having name, name of the students, marks of the students, and pass or fail. And you know, based on the marks that we have to calculate, pass or fail. And also, we are, go we are going to calculate the grade of the particular student. If you see on the right hand side that I'm having the, you know, the conditions over there, if conditions like that. If I'm getting more than 210 marks, the, the student is passed. If he's getting, if the student is pursuing less than 210 marks, he's a failed candidate. Okay. If he's going to get more than 210 marks, then we are going to, you know, categorizing again different different grades based on their marks. If he's going to get it more than 500 marks, he should get A grade. If he's going to get less than 500 marks and more than 400 marks, that is B grade. And you know, and the vice versa, if you're going to 300 marks, above 300 marks, and less than 400 marks, hit the C grade. Okay, this is what exactly we're going to develop by using UI Path Studio. Let me switch to UiPath Studio. We are in the UiPath Studio Pro community and I have already created a process with the name of loop activities. Okay, so as a first step, what we have to do, we have to drag and drop the sequence container on our drop activity. Let me go to activities. If you see, I'm having under my favorites that I'm having sequence. Let me drag and drop the sequence container on my panel. Okay, and if you want to give any names, you can give this, uh, you know, for the container, you can give the name from here. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it as loop activity. The sequence name I'm just giving as loop activity. And then, as a first step, what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag and drop this, you know, activity for each activity. I'm going to work it for each, right? So that I'm just searching in the activity cells for each. Under that, you will be getting later a lot of things like data table, system activities, under system activities, parallel for each. But right now, we're going to use under workflow, we are having control. Under control, we are having for each activity. Let me drag and drop this for each activity onto my panel. Okay, now you can see the same thing which we have seen in the previous slide that it looks the same thing. So, so if you are having a little bit .NET coding over there, you know, it is very easy to understand the UI path also. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take all these marks based on these marks, I'm going to calculate his particular student pass or fail. And then based on that, that I'm going to, you know, calculate the grade of the students. Okay, now if you see, I'm having 514, 180, 300 and 405 respective students right i'm going to give the same thing over here now if you see over here i'm having for each item uh, you know in 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 what so i have to see the properties over here if you see over here there's a different types of arguments that we are having for for each activity let me drop that if you see there's a boolean n32 string object data table array of t and different different types of data types which are available for the for each. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it as an object. But in real time scenario, you know, you are going to fetch the data from the Excel and then you are going to loop them and then you are going to calculate the student marks and all. So when it is coming to the Excel activities, I'm going to let you know, you know, how to work with the Excel to fetch the data from the Excel and then how to calculate each and every student marks and grades from there.
Okay, for the time being, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to explain you for each, so that what I'm going to do, I'm just giving the values over here. You can see the properties over here. When you click the properties, you can find the values over here. Let me click on three dots. This is the expression editor. To store the object, the type of argument is object so that you know you have to start with the brackets okay and you can see the marks that i'm going to give it as you know 514 180 300 and i'm going to give 214 so this is the respective marks that you know respective students got the marks over here and then i'm going to click on okay so whenever you are going to represent the object you have to use this brackets Okay, and then you are going to use, you know, you are going to get each and every item separated by the comma. Okay, now I'm going to read this each and every item, right? How can I go ahead and say, you know, it is going to be reading each and every item? Let me go to activities and then I'm going to drag and drop a message box onto my body. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just simply, if you see, for each item, so what are the item 514, 180, 300, 214, it's a looping. Every time it is going to be iterating and then the first values you can see over here, the indexing starts from zero based. So everything it will be stored in zero, one, two, three. When I'm starting with zero, the item will be stored, the value will be stored in the item and the respective values will be displayed over here. How can I show that? So I'm just simply going ahead as item. I'm going to read this, the 514, and then I'm going to, uh, you know, fetch the values into the item, and item I'm going to display it. Okay. So if the value is in string, no issues. Then you know the message box also converts the value uh, having it will take the values of strings. But if it is not, then we have to convert it. Now before that, let me go ahead. Let me save it by clicking on Control S. Now let me go ahead. Let me debug the file. So I'm going to run the file. You can see the execution started for the main and loop activities execution started. Now you can see the first it has been started, execution has been started. Now you can see the first item as 514. When you click on OK, this is second value 180, third value 300, and the fourth value is 214. So it is going to be looping each and every time it is going to read the values and then it is going to be displaying on the message box so this is where we are going to use looping condition so by using for each you can go for the, what are the values we have given in the type arguments as an object and the values based on the values it is going on iterating and then it is going to display in the message box now by using this for each i have read the values now what i'm going to do i'm going to delete this message box for the time being and then you know i'm going to use if activity so the particular value, whatever the values we got it, that we have to check it out, the particular student is pass or fail, correct? Now what I'm going to do, if you see over here that the values, whichever which are coming in the string format, the first thing is that we have to convert that into integer, right? So what I'm going to do, convert dot two int of 32, I'm going to take different data types, you can see, 2 in 16, 2 in 32, 2 in 64. Now I'm going to take 2 in 32 of, what is the value? Item. I'm going to convert whatever the value it is coming into the, you know, I, I'm going to convert into integer, and then I'm going to check it out. If the value is greater than 210 marks, if the condition is true, then what I'm going to say, I'm going to say again, I'm going to drag one more sequence over here and then I'm going to put it. There is a reason this is not required for each and every time the sequence, but I'm having a on the steps also. That's the reason I'm going to drag and drop the sequence over here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pin this activity also, not every time. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag the message box over here. Okay, now what I'm going to say, if the marks is greater than 214, then I will just simply display as congratulations, You are pass. So this is my message box with, that I'm going to display if the marks is greater than 210. So what about the else case? Let me copy the same thing and let me put it over here. Just drag and drop. So over here, I'm sorry, 
if it is less than 210 marks, I'm just saying, I am sorry, you will fail. Let me save the entire thing. Let me run once again. Now, if you see, the first one is 514 marks so that you are passed, right? Now, let me go ahead, let me click on OK. But the second value is 180 so that, I'm sorry, you are failed. It is less than 210 marks. So it went to the else statement and then it is failed. So on the remaining 300 and 214, congratulations, you are passed. I hope this is about the if condition. Now what I'm going to do, based on the marks, I'm going to switch. I'm going to give the grades. That is the one more part is pending. That what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag and drop the switch activity on my sequence. So I'm not going to use any switch activity over here in the else part because of if it is failed, there is no grades, correct? So that you know, I'm just using in the switch activity only in the sequence of then part. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the expression over here. What is the expression? If you see over here, I'm going to convert the value into uh, whatever the item I have selected over here into conversion. I'm going to just doing the same thing. I'm just copying the same thing or else. In real time scenarios, you no, know, don't copy paste the values because of it is very good idea to convert Okay, to type and to convert the values by using manually. Don't copy paste it. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to grade the values, right? If I were getting more than 500 marks, in that case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, make it in as a pass. And then, you know, if he's getting more than 500 marks, I'm going to give it a grade of five, oh, sorry, grade of A. If it's getting more than I know 400, then I'm going to get it off B. If it is more than 300 and less than 400, I'm going to give it as C, correct? What I'm going to do, I'm going to divide the marks and then what are the quotient values that I'm going to get it based on that, that I'm going to give the case statements over there. That is the reason I'm going to convert this item value uh, divided by 100, I'm going to give it. And then I'm going to add the values over here. So as a case value, if it is more than 300, that is, you know, the value case value is more than three, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to display a message box for the three, uh, three marks, right? You got grade C, okay? In the same way, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add new one more case. If it is a four, then I'm going to say, we have given all the cases over here. If you see, if I got, more than 300 marks that is, you know, that student value three, then we are going to get it like, you know, grade C. If it is more than 400 marks, we are going to get it as a grade B. If it is more than 500 marks, then we are going to get it as a grade A. And more than 200 marks, I have not given anything. Okay, I'm just leaving as is, okay? Now let me go ahead, let me run this. Now you can see 414, the first message is, you know, we are going to say, congratulations, you are passed you got grade A because of, it is more than 500, 500 marks, right? That you got grade A by using switch case. Now, the second one, 180, that you are failed and we're not going to give any grade. And third one, it is going to 300, congratulations, you are passed, that will come as a grade C. And then, you know, 214, congratulations, you are just passed and we're not going to give any kind of message. Okay, this is all about the different, different things of you know, switch case, if condition, uh, switch activity, if activity, and for each activity. Thank you for watching UiPath tutorials. If you have any queries related to this concept, please post them in the comment section. I will see you in the next session. Till then, bye-bye. Have a nice day.